Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day and today guys we are going to be going over a build or at least an updated version of an old build I did a little while ago. But the main purpose of this video is to talk about how insanely strong corrosive damage or corrosive status effect has recently become as of the last two patches that Remnant 2 has had. So this month Remnant 2 did see two notable updates one being the massive balance patch and then the second one being the bug fix to that actual balance patch and in these updates we did see the nebula receiving a change so now the nano swarm when they do hit an enemy they now also apply the corrosive dot on top of their acid damage that they're already doing they now apply the corrosive dot so that means that the nebula is able to apply two corrosive dots onto the target at once. Hunter's Spear also got changed as of the recent balance patch. It now applies corrosive damage. A very small dot, and not a, a dot that lasts very long, but it does apply corrosive damage now. But unfortunately, when that balance patch did come out, none of the charge melee mutators were working with the Hunter's Spear. As of the recent bug fix to that balance patch, it now does work with every charge melee mutator, at least the ones that I've tried out. I'm pretty sure it does work with all charge melee mutators. So now with the new nebula change, and if you put Tainted Blade on the Huntress Spear, and with the new Huntress Spear chain, you're able to apply four corrosive dots straight away. So if you get a long gun with a mod and a mutator spot available, you can put corrosive ammo mod rounds on, and you can also put the feeded wound mutator on which then will give you another two corrosive dots so if you take the nebula the hunter's spear with tainted blade and a long gun set up with the corrosive ammo mod and the feated wounds mutator you're able to apply six corrosive dots now six throw in miasma throw in red ring of death and boom baby you have eight eight corrosive dots on the target at once which is it's getting a little silly. I haven't tested this. I would love to test this, but maybe now if you're in a group of three and you're all using a corrosive dot build and you're applying as many corrosive dots as possible, you could probably apply up to 24 corrosive dots, which is absurd. Uh, but the enemies are going to melt faster than when Dorothy threw the bucket of water on the Wicked Witch, all right? I'm remember tainted blade gets its melee damage increase based on how many corrosive dots you have on the target so i'd love to test this out but if you have 24 corrosive dots does that mean you get 240 percent extra melee damage if that's the case could you imagine everyone building those corrosive dots up and then unleashing melee attacks is that is this really how this is going to work i i really hope not otherwise that's insane your sustained damage is absolutely absurd now if you're pretty much gonna have six to seven corrosive dots on the boss or target at once but there's plenty of times now where the boss phases away and he just dies because he's got all those corrosive stacks on him and there's nothing he can do about that i really do feel like the duration of status effects maybe do need to be uh nerfed a little bit or at least the affliction uh, trait card needs to be nerfed. I think 100% extra status effect duration is extremely busted now that they fixed Energize Netcoil and they're just going to keep adding in more corrosive dots like god damn it. So I am quickly just going to go over the build that you guys were probably seeing the clips while I was over here yapping away about how broken corrosive damage is now. I don't know how long this is going to last for. I feel like they're probably going to tweak some stuff with status effect duration. But until the meantime, exploiters exploit early. So take advantage of status effect builds now because I don't know if they're going to stay the, the way they are uh, in the future. We'll, we'll see. So for the build I was showing you guys, me just going through and destroying all the bosses with corrosive damage. Of course, I am using Ritualist and I am using Challenger. But we are using Challenger mainly because we are using Shotgun and Nebula, two very close range weapons. So for Ritualist, we are using Miasma. Miasma, the only reason we're using this is to apply more status effects but mainly get an extra corroded status effect out on the target helping us get to seven if you do take red ring of death you can get to eight corrosion sacks i think just taking the negative 10 percent damage to status effect is not worth it in this scenario but if you do want to get eight corrosion stacks that's good that's going to be how you're going to do that and then for challenger we are using rampage now rampage isn't going to increase our status effect damage at all the main reason we're using rampage is to get more fire rate more reload speed and more movement speed now rampage of course is still going to help us spark fire do more damage though uh, so that is nice for the armor i'm wearing i just got the zealot's hat the void capris the leto marks two legs and the void wrap hand uh, the shield, I've just got shielded heart, just more defense. I've got increased elemental damage, increased to range crit damage. I was playing around with mod damage. It does seem that range crit damage just pulls 
ahead just a little bit because we are using our shotgun all the time uh, we are using mods all the time but not as much as our shotgun so that's the way i've gone and then we also have got negative 10 percent skill cooldown this is just going to help get my asthma back it's only on a 32 second cooldown and also to try and get Rampage back just a little bit quicker at Rampage on long, long cooldown anyway, so I wouldn't really worry about it. For the weapons, we are taking the Spark 5 shotgun. You can use whatever you want, whatever has the mod and the mutator slot free. The main reason I went with Spark Fire is so I can put on the Singe Ring, just so we can get an extra 10% increase to all damage. Of course, using Corrosive Rounds and using Feated Wounds, this is how we're gonna be able to get two Corrosive Stacks out on the enemy. For the melee weapon, of course, we are taking the Huntress Spear. Uh, like I said, the Hunter Spear did get changed. It now applies corrosion on its charge melee attacks. Because we are taking a lot of status effect duration, I have buffed this up to 20 seconds, which is a lot better than I think the five seconds it has. And it does pretty decent acid damage, so that, that's decent. But now that they did fix Hunter Spear, it is much stronger because we're able to use Tainted Blade. You could also use Stormbringer. I felt like Tainted Blade just pulled ahead a little bit more, but maybe just for the overall status effect builds instead of just honing in on one uh, status effect. Stormbringer is probably going to be better if you choose to use the Hunter Spear or probably just even the Krellax for that matter. I just felt like the tainted blade pulled a little bit ahead it gives us an extra uh, stack of corrosion and this stack of corrosion damage is filthy it is filthy look at that 11,700 damage what the hell man over 80 seconds this is never falling off the target you have to throw one spear and you don't really have to throw it again for another 80 seconds i mean you can reapply just the normal huntress spear corrosion every 20 seconds but even then Every 20 seconds you just have to throw one melee and you've got some insane damage ticking away on the target. 80 seconds just feels like way too long. And of course, last but not least, we have the Nebula. Now, as I said before, the Nebula also went through a recent change where the Nano Swarm now applies the Corroded Status Effect. Now, I did want to talk about this because I'm not, I'm not sure if my mass is off. I, look, my mass could be off. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not the most intelligent person on the face of the planet. But I wanted to show you guys quickly here that the nano swarms seem to be leaving a massive dot 350 corrosive dot each tick is that supposed to be doing that if i put fire on the target it goes to 385 if i go over here 385 extra 10 percent like to me that doesn't make any sense look the nano swarms gone you can see it's not their damage it's still ticking 385 is that supposed to is that supposed to be that amount of damage because if you actually look how much corrosion damage it applies, it applies 284. This is with the increases with Ritualist uh, trait card and Timekeeper's Jewel. So over 40 seconds, if we just do the math here. So 284 divided by 40 gives you 62.1 or, you know, round down 62 damage. It should be ticking for 62 damage. Why? Is it ticking for more than 62 damage? 350, That is that supposed to be ticking for that much? I don't know. I don't think it is. The mass doesn't really work out. Effluvium enhancer, or however you say that, effluvium enhancer. Because if I take this off, if we just put the bleed on, it changes the damage. It, it literally is accounting for uh, this, this amulet, but for some reason it's ticking much, much, much higher then I think it should be, or is my calculation wrong? I don't know. E either way, the, the nebula is just insane now for corrosive builds. You're gonna, the nano swarms apply the corrosive dot. It can apply a corrosive dot itself. It's quite strong. And also, if you kill an enemy, it will spawn a gas cloud, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. I have put the harmonizer on here, which is gonna increase its mod damage by 20%. This does not increase that status effect that I was talking about, the big chunky status effect. Now for the amulet and the rings, I just mentioned this one. I've got the F Livium. F Livium Enhancer, I'm, I'm probably butchering it, you guys are probably laughing at me. Uh, F Livium Enhancer increases acid damage by 20% and corrosive damage by 50%. This is really strong now that we're able to apply seven to eight corrosive dots on the target and they're all going to be getting increased by 50%. That is just ridiculous. We have the Timekeeper's Jewel to extend the duration of our status effect. I've put Burden of the Destroyer, so it doesn't really affect us too much, but you will notice it on a shotgun, obviously, but we do want it because it gives us 15% increase to all damage, which is gonna be very nice since we're using so many different sources of damage. And that's the same thing with the Singe Ring. We're mainly using this to give us a global damage multiplier to all of our damage sources, courtesy of the Spark Fire Shotgun. And then of course, you guys know it, Stone of Malevolence is just gonna help us get our mod power back when we deal elemental damage, which is with everything, which is gonna help us get corrosive rounds and, and also the very OP and destructive nano swarms now that leave very juicy dots on the target. Quickly for the traits we are using, I did 
it put six points into ammo reserve. I got five points into flash caster, maxing out fortify. I've got six points into regrows. I've got five points into untouchable. Just gives us more invulnerability window. I've really have warmed up to this trait card. We've maxed out vigor. We've got seven points into endurance. I've got three points into spirit just to help us get our mod back a bit quicker now that stone and malevolence did get fixed. It doesn't just generate crazy amounts of mod power anymore. We've maxed out expertise, get our skills back a little bit faster. We've maxed out bark skin, got five points in the handling. You're definitely gonna need this when using a shotgun, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Last but not least, max out Siphoner as always to have more survivability. And that is basically it for this video guys. I just wanna do a quick little video showing you guys how busted uh, corrosive damage is now currently inside of Remnant 2, especially with these two updates that they just had, uh, but like kind of fixing the nebula, changing the Hunter's Spear to be able to apply corrosion, and now charge melee mutators do work with the Hunter's Spear, so that has definitely received a massive buff. It is nice finally having another melee weapon that we're able to friggin' throw and apply a status effect. I do feel like it's a little weird that corrosive damage you're able to apply seven, eight dots, but none of the other status effects you're able to apply nearly as many dots as that, and they're not nearly as strong as corrosion, so I don't know uh, what the goal is with there. Did they forget that other status effects exist in the game? But either way, corrosion builds have just got an insane buff with all these new little changes that they brought out. Appreciate all the love and support as always, guys. And until next time, stay safe. Peace out.